In the 1990s, there were fierce battles from the East Coast to the West Coast, featuring renowned physicists like Dr. Dre. And he was battling Biggie Smalls, Tupac, Nas, and the Wu-Tang Clan. Well, would it surprise you to know that there are battles in physics every bit as heated, although hopefully not as bloody, as those battles that plagued the rap scene of the 1990s. Today I'm doing a reaction video to another reaction video. How about that for meta? If you're new here, I'm Brian Keating, the Chancellor's Distinguished Professor of Physics at UC San Diego. I'm also an experimental cosmologist for decades, been involved with some of the biggest and best experiments of all time in this field, from BICEP, BICEP2, Simons Array, Simons Observatory, and many, many more. I speak today as an experimentalist to my two friends, Carlo Rovelli and Sabina Hassenfelder. As I said, I'll be reacting to a reaction, but that reaction was provoked by an original video that I made that depicted loop quantum gravity as possibly suffering a fatal blow thanks to new data from an experiment coming out of China. Talk about East versus West. That video was about loop quantum gravity and the so-called appearance of Lorentz invariance violation that seems to occur within certain models of it. There was a paper published by a Chinese team operating the Lasso experiment. I contacted the paper author about the Lorentz invariance violation effects in reported in his team's paper. I asked him specifically, does this mean that certain models of loop quantum gravity are dead? He replied, yes, linear loop quantum gravity models are dead. And in fact, that was the entirety of the subject of my previous video. Well, that video unleashed a whirlwind, a firestorm. First came a video made by Phil Halpern, who runs a channel called Skydive Phil. And he's done many videos with his friend, Carlo Rovelli, and I don't blame him. Loop quantum gravity is fascinating, and as you know, I've done multiple videos about my hope for success of loop quantum gravity, but this most recent video saw me very much disillusioned. So when Phil, of Skydive Phil fame, he contacted Carlo and said that my video was bollocks. I don't know what that really means. To be honest with you, I'm a yank. So after Phil put out his video criticizing my video, including a five minute commentary from 2019 about Carlo Rovelli responding to claims that loop quantum gravity should have Lorentz invariance violation in it. Carlo wrote me and told me I should take the video down. Now Carlo and I are good friends. We've done many videos together. We've met in person many times and he played the role of Galileo in our 22 hour long audiobook of Galileo's dialogue. He plays the lead role, Salviati, the genius who proves the Copernican theory to be correct and then suffer some consequences, shall we say? Needless to say, I respect Carlo greatly. He's written some of the most popular and best written books in physics and science of all time, and I've reviewed many of them, and he will be coming on to directly rebut me to my face. Sabina recently released a video which also comments and seems to suggest that some of what I claimed in my video is absolutely correct. So I wanna review some of the correspondence that Carlo and I had, and Phil Halpern as well, about my previous video, where I discussed how the new findings from Lasso might impact certain models of loop quantum gravity. Yes, I did show thumbnail of Ed Witten in front of the grave site of loop quantum gravity. Maybe that was a little bit impolite of me, but that's the nature of YouTube, and sometimes you need to be a little bit provocative. First, we're gonna start with a quick recap of the arguments that Carlo and I have been having by email for the past several weeks about this video that I made and the claims that he makes to counter some of the claims that I made. I think it's important. I admit I could be wrong. And in fact, in the video, I suggested that of all people on earth, Carlo will probably be the person to prove me wrong or say that my, my position is wrong. I've tried in the video and in my previous work to make a distinction between loop quantum gravity and models of it and versions of it that predict Lorentz invariance violation. In the paper, I said specifically that lasso results pose a significant blow to theories like loop quantum gravity that predict Lorentz invariance violation, LQG that predicts LIV, and that they do rule out a vast landscape of loop quantum gravity. Now, according to the lead author of lasso, I'll redact his name, but I'll show you the email here. He said, yes, this does rule out the linear models. Now, linear Lorentz invariance terms you took quarrel with, and you said that in your estimation, you would agree with that fact, but According to you, it applies as much to string theory as it does to loop quantum gravity. So why didn't you make a video you said that says string theory is dead? And that's a good point, except I'm making a comment at the very start of the video that monopolies are bad and string theory has monopoly on all of high energy particle physics. Many of my past guests, I won't name their names again and again, have come on to decry how bad string theory is for not just you know high energy physics world, but for science society, and maybe even the opportunity to leave planet earth and teleport and transmute ourselves across the galaxy. 
I was trying to make a statement that it's good to have competitors to string theory. It's bad to have a monopoly. It's bad when you only have one cell phone carrier, one internet search engine, one cable company, or here in San Diego, only one professional sports team. Go Padres. So I felt like the monopoly that string theory has was very pernicious. And I was hoping more than almost anybody that good, hard experimental evidence could come to slay string theory or at least challenge it. We need challenges to these ideas. And I've had on all the top proponents of all alternative theories of quantum gravity. And I won't go into those videos. As I said, you can find them in my links down below. But it seems to me that I'll make an, an Italian analogy. If there is a leader of loop quantum gravity, it would be you, sort of the Pope of loop quantum gravity. And anybody like me who claims that loop quantum gravity has flaws or maybe could be proven wrong, you look at me as a heretic or an apostate. And that doesn't didn't turn out so well for people like Giordano Bruno or my good friend Galileo. So I wanna make sure that this is clear. I'm not trying to be non-collegial. I'm trying to express the possibility that you could be wrong too. And I wanna collect evidence based on both the historical facts, theoretical evidence, observational evidence, and also bring in other people. It's my duty to do some due diligence, to fact check and see if there are indeed are no theories of loop quantum gravity that have linear dependencies as they express in the lasso paper in equation one. You're absolutely right. I agree 100% that these can apply to linear string theory models, which would then be a bit of evidence in favor of string theory in that now it has evidence that can be used to falsify it. Remember, there are whole books, as I've shown, you know, what is the experimental evidence for string theory? And there's a blank page. Now, of course, we don't only try to find evidence for something, we find evidence against it. So therefore, it's a good thing that Lasso's results have implications for anything that could potentially be fatal, either for string theory, loop quantum gravity, E8, GU, and even things like uh, the Wolfram Physics Project. So I've genuinely been hoping for loop quantum gravity to thrive, potentially as a replacement for string theory. But when the facts, as I understand them, change, as John Maynard Keynes said, I change my mind, and especially based on new experimental data. Any prediction that results from equation one is now ruled out by their data. And so, since you have no quarrel with that, I can't understand why you'd also conclude that it doesn't rule out findings in loop quantum gravity, which also feature this linear effect. And the reason I said it rules out such a vast landscape is because usually the most likely term to be present in a theory are the lower energy terms or the terms that can they, they are responsible for. These are small effects. So anything that's higher than a linear power will be a much, much smaller effect, typically in most of these theories. And I've studied these in optical polarimetry. I refer to a 2004 paper that predicted Lorentz invariance violation in loop quantum gravity. And you told me that it's been debunked in our email correspondence. But there are still people that are promulgating the notion that there is Lorentz invariance violation in loop quantum gravity. So even though you claim that that was debunked in 2004, and maybe even earlier, still five years after that, the Fermi Space Telescope using gamma ray astronomy led to a claim published in Symmetry Magazine, which I'll put a link to down below, that this was bad for certain models of loop quantum gravity. So to me, that suggests, if, it was, if you claim it was ruled out in 2004, the Fermi telescope doesn't claim that it was ruled out in 2004, and even the Big Bang Theory television show, which I opened the original video with, they were still promulgating that many, many years after the so-called 2004 debunking. So either I have 100% faith and trust in you, and don't question anything that you say to me, or I should investigate and do a little bit more due diligence, which I did. That's why I contacted the lead author of the paper before I even made the video. If he said, no, this has no implications for loop quantum gravity, I wouldn't have made the video. I have to be honest with you. So your beef, if anything, was with him, but now you're agreeing that yes, anything that has this linear dependence as in equation one, like string theory, certain models of string theory at least, could be ruled out. So I think it's a win-win to have this discussion. now. Let's bring in good friend of the show, Sabina Hassenfelder, where she analyzed my video. Again, this is very meta here. We're going super above the fray. She takes a more nuanced take on the history and current state of loop quantum gravity, concluding that effectively it's time to give up. In fact, her title of her video is, please, no more loop quantum gravity. She's not even extending the charitable offer, if you will, to you, Carlo, that loop quantum gravity could still thrive and survive at either higher order than linear or in some other way. She's saying it's dead, stop talking about it, stop bothering. She talks about our good friend and past guest, Lee Smolin, one of the founders of loop quantum gravity, who positioned it early on as a contender to string theory. One of the big deals, according to Sabina's video, was that Lee and others claim that the benefit 
is that it is testable, and therefore testable means falsifiable in the Popperian sense. Karl Popper said a good scientific theory should not only be able to be proved right, but it should also be falsifiable, being able to be proved wrong. According to Smolin's camp, Sabina said, Loop quantum gravity implies the speed of light should depend on the color or energy of the field due to a supposed minimal length scale in space. And this would lead to observable delays in light from cosmic sources, exactly what I talked about. And those delays would be either of the entire wave packet at all frequencies or of their polarization states could arrive at different times or their colors could arrive at different times as well. And Carlo pointed out that actually he disabused me of the notion that loop quantum gravity predicts that in an interview that we did in 2020. And he's absolutely right, he did say that. But again, do I only take one person if it's my friend, Carlo Romelli? What if I only took Lee Smolin, who's also my friend, or only took Sabina Hassenfelder's voice? What I wanna do as an experimentalist is collect all the evidence and leave it, not for you to decide out there because you may not be an expert. You may be a complete lay person, but very interested in learning more about string theory and its rivals. And this is a very interesting case in the sociology of science, which is something we never talk about. So Sabina agrees with my claims in the earlier video, and she said so on X, that these results, including Fermi and other results, as well as the recent Lasso result, constrain or maybe even rule out such Lorentz invariant violation effects. More importantly, she highlights that most researchers in loop quantum gravity, including Carlo Rovelli, disagree with Smolin's assertion that loop quantum gravity necessarily predicts Lorentz invariance violation. Now, Carlo in his email says that he convinced Lee that Lee was wrong, and that might be true, and, and I know that Lee didn't retract exactly. He actually sort of strengthened it after the Fermi results in 2009 led to a big brouhaha, probably was what made the Big Bang Theory use that differentiation between loop quantum gravity and string theory in the cold open open of my previous video. That came out in 2009. Lee had a reaction to the Fermi results that seemed to say there could be wiggle room that it seemed to me at least, loop quantum gravity could still survive. So Sabina concludes that the experimental results rule out certain models of loop quantum gravity that predict Lorentz invariance violation, but they don't invalidate loop quantum gravity as a whole. And I said that in the video as well. I said this rules out the linear model, et cetera, and Carlo can probably prove me wrong and, and show how it's loop quantum gravity can still thrive. Sabina doesn't believe that we should even be troubled by loop quantum gravity ever again. I'm much more charitable. Carlo rightfully pointed out to me that string theory gets tons and tons more more money, more attention, and there are still whole conferences and stuff devoted to this. My colleagues go to them, they go to beaches, they go skiing, they talk about it. But even to me, it seems like some people who are really positioned themselves as the definitive voice of string theory have kind of gone away from it. Ed Witten hasn't published much on this at all. He's published things on black holes, and Juan Mel de Sena has published more on, on wormholes than he has on string theory, at least in the cursory search discussions that I've had with Juan. So I want to make sure that science is allowed to continue based on a diversity of thought. We should be open to the possibility that certain models within loop quantum gravity might be constrained or even ruled out, while others remain viable. I don't see a problem with that. So let's move forward together. I've had many, many positive comments about that video, including some from eminent string theorists and theorists of what's called SUSY or supersymmetry reacting in a very positive way. Perhaps that's understandable because it led to the to discuss the death of potential death. At least the thumbnail suggested that. I'm sorry again uh, for maybe being a little too clickbaity at that point. But I believe but by acknowledging models that are in trouble have been ruled out and focusing on those that are still consistent with experimental results, we can make real progress in our pursuit of quantum gravity. In my field, experimental cosmology, when a theory is constrained by new data, the theorists appreciate it, they rejoice. It helps refine their models and deepen their understanding. What I do and the theoreticians in my field are just as bright and just as capable as Carlo, as Lee, as Sabina, or any of the voices we've had on this channel. That's how we push science forward. Now, I'll be having Carlo back on the show and I'll have Sabina on the show. I won't put them together because I'm afraid of what might happen, but if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you check out my most recent conversation with Sabina, my previous videos on loop quantum gravity, and my many discussions with others about alternative theories of unification of forces and fields, and specifically loop quantum gravity. And don't miss the takedown of me, the reaction video of me, uh, from Phil Halper on Scott I Phil on his YouTube channel. And stay tuned for my friendly debate with my good friend, co-author, and co-narrator, Carlo Rovelli. Let me know in the comments what you'd like me to ask him, and whose side you're on. Team Brian, Team Sabina, Team Carlo, Team Ed Winton, or Team Biggie Smalls. <laughs>